Canon PTZ Auto Tracking. What is it? How do you go about installing it? And then of course, how to control it remotely over an iPad or a Stream Deck to switch this on and off. Let's kick off and take a look at what you're gonna need to download. In the description below, there is a link. Firmware version 1.5 for the N300 or 500, 1.4 for the N700 as of October, 2024. Just above that is the auto tracking application RAAT001 version 1.2.2. That's the version that you want to download. Let's take a look at how to install and then enable this. So for this, we're actually gonna go into a web browser and access the camera. This is just the homepage. Click on the gear icon. You might need to log in. And then you wanna come down to maintenance, firmware update, update firmware, select the thing that you unzipped and you want this bin file. Go ahead, execute, make sure your power stays on and that you don't interrupt that process. The camera will reboot and you'll sort of lose access to it and then you'll come back in. And then you should say version 1.5 for the N300 or 500 and then the N700 version 1.4. Once you've done that, jump over to system and then add-on, it's an additional application that is running on the camera. It's not running on the computer. You're just using computer to access and install that. Again, click on this file here and you're gonna get the DMG here, open that, and then you can click install. Once you've installed that, you can select the auto tracking application in this section down here, and you can go startup, if you have a license, that's where you would go in here and um, validate that. There is also 30 days of full features. A trial license, you can see mine has expired here. Just a note that you can buy the full version of this for $800. But with each Canon camera, you, there's now a free version, which has very basic features. You don't need to pay $800 for. So today we're gonna to look at the free version and then this add-on top page, click to open and it'll open up in the, the actual tracking page. The other way to access that, if you're more used to this side here where you set your exposure and all of that, if you come over to other functions, now that you've installed it, you can, you've got this add-on function here go view, select, and then you can go open. Under these gear icons, this is all the full features that you'll see in here. So um, pan and tilt operation control, initial position, you have tracking target, composition, auto select exclusion area, tracking halting area. So all of these advanced features are not available in here. For the free version that you can access when you purchase the camera, you just have this page here. So we can turn on tracking. And then the other thing we can do is turn on the silhouette size. On the paid version, you've got five different levels of that. On the free version, you've only got level two and level four. So even if I select level one, it's gonna to jump to level two. So this is the wide, and then this is the close. The problem I have with this is that the display position here is locked. So this little position here of the silhouette, um, you can't move that in this free version, which is really annoying because it really only means that this close version is usable in terms of the headroom. If you were to use the wide position, you can't actually, because you can't reposition the silhouette, I've got a ton of headroom, you're seeing the microphone, all that kind of thing. So um, I would say you're probably gonna either just use the, um, the close position to track someone on sort of a mid-shot MCU type um, aspect, or you might just turn silhouette off and just use the, the tracking and not actually using the silhouette there. The other thing that you have is under initial position, you can, you can set a frame to fall back on if you lose tracking. So say I wanna set a larger frame to fall back on so that if I lose tracking, it'll pull back and it'll rediscover me. So I can go capture. And so now just to show you when I pan off, if I wanted to see what that is, I'll click on view and it will frame up the, uh, the lost position. Then you have two more options. One is either maintaining the viewing angle, so it's gonna do nothing. If it loses focus, it just stays there. Or if you turn on return to initial position, then it's going to, this is the recovery. So you can set the amount of time you want it to wait before it does that. 
So maybe say like two seconds, meaning like I might walk out of frame but come back in, and if that's under two seconds, it's not gonna move. But if I leave frame after two seconds, it's gonna pull back to that initial recovery position. So that is basically what you get on the free version of it. Uh, let's take a look now at the Stream Deck remote control because this is where it becomes really useful is we don't wanna always go into the web browser and have to tinker around with those. We want those buttons to be so we can turn on tracking um, on or off in the Stream Deck while we're doing all of our other operations. If you would like this pre-built, then I do have a profile available. DavidJoshuaFord.com is where you can go to get that profile and download it, and that will control up to six PTZ cameras. You would then go to Companion. If you're not familiar with Companion, there's plenty of things on my channel about how to download and install Companion. It's basically an application that's gonna run on your computer. And then again, in a web browser, you will come in here into import, a dot companion config is what it would end in, full import, reset and import, and then that will bring in the buttons and you'll have um, six cameras that you can control. And you can actually have that across four stream decks. So you can have your, your sort of homepage here, selecting all the cameras and moving them around. And then you've got your recall buttons up to 36 buttons there and your adjustments here, and then sort of a, a menu page to jump around. And as you select each camera, each of these stream decks will update. So four decks if you want them, or you could do a you know three decks or two decks, or even one deck into this one. And you can run the whole profile just by one stream deck. So if I select the cameras along the bottom here, one to six, so I select camera, one, and then you've got either your recalls from nine to 36. On your homepage, you've got one to eight. And then you've got your adjustments here for further exposure or some of the auto tracking adjustments that we have going on there. So let's take a look at them. We can, we can, we've got tracking on at the moment, I think. So it's going, it's tracking me around. If I found my position and I wanted to turn that off, I could just turn it off and now it's not tracking. And um, the other one that we can do is turning on the silhouette. So I got to turn on my tracking. Now remember we said we had the silhouette which was on the wide or on the close. So you can basically toggle between those two settings by pressing this button here. Or if you hold it down, it'll turn off that silhouette and it's just gonna be using the auto tracking. Then over on the adjustments page, this is where you've got your lost recovery. So you can set uh, this button here, set lost frame. If you, every time you press that, it's just going to remember wherever the PTZ settings were. And so now this is my sort of fallback frame that I have. And then we have our lost recovery on or off. There's a few buttons below here that don't show up on the Stream Deck, but on the iPad version, they are there. Otherwise on the computer, you can set the time that you want for recovery to 30 seconds. I'll set it like two seconds, one second up to 30 seconds, shift click. It's going to action these buttons. So just to recap, if you want to get this profile, have that functionality already in there, go to davidjoshuaford.com and that's where that will be. Well, that's all we have time for on today's show. Hope that helped you get an idea of how to not only set up your um, auto tracking on your Canon PTZ cameras, but to enable it to be used remotely via uh, an iPad or a Stream Deck. If you have any other questions, drop them down in the comments. We'd love to hear them. Until next time, I'll see you then. Bye.